Thank you, everybody, for your guys' patience. We had a little difficult uh, technical difficulties, but we know that that's just the enemy trying to ruin this message or trying to hinder this message from what, what is going to be presented tonight. For we know this message is also a heavy message that will, re that will uh, reveal God's seal and will kind of highlight the mark of the beast tonight, okay? So thank you guys so much for your guys' prayers and the piano and, you know, um, just thank you for your guys' patience for tonight, okay? Amen? So before we start, uh, let us pray, okay? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much, Lord, for gathering us here together. Thank you for uh, getting the computer working again, Lord, for we know that the enemy don't like this message, but Lord, you've given us victory, Lord, once again, to overcome anything that he's uh, trying to throw at us, Lord. And you continue, continuously give us that victory, Lord. Thank you so much for all that you do. We love you. Uh, be with my, my, with my tongue and my speech and be with everyone in here and help us to have a receptive spirit. We love you and we say this prayer as Father. In and through your Son, Jesus' name, and we say amen. Amen. So thank you once again for coming to our Daniel and Revelation seminar. Uh, we're winding down to the last few days of the, um, the seminar and this event, and it was, you know, it's a blessing that we, we get to share to you. So tonight, we'll be covering this topic right here, the seal of God. Any of you here know what is the seal of God or have any um, idea what it is? If you do, raise up your hands. Anybody? Amen, amen. Okay. All right. So I'll try to do my best to, um, to review this and review it to you guys, to you girls. And let's um, let the Lord speak and let him review more things to us. Amen. Okay. So the seal of God. What is the seal of God? And where to find it. Amen. Okay. So let us read this passage right here. It's, it's in Ezekiel 20, 19 and 20. Let us read this. One, two, three, go. So, Your Lord God, walk in my statues and keep my judgments and do them and hollow my Sabbaths and they shall be a what? A sign between me and you that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Amen? So we, we see that this sign is none other than what? The... The Sabbath, according to the scripture, and according to different passages in the Bible, amen? So let's go move on. So let, that's, we're wetting, we're wetting the whistle. The sign here, this, this sign or this seal of God is, uh, is found in the Sabbath, amen? And where, where is it found? Where is this Sabbath found? This Sabbath, the Sabbath, where is, where is it found? It's found none other than in the Ten Commandments. So we see right here, it's the Fourth Commandments, as you know. Remember... To keep the Sabbath holy, amen? And most of us here, we observe the Sabbath day, amen? So it's found none other than in the Ten Commandments. So it's, as we reviewed, it's the Fourth Commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, amen? So this, this Fourth Commandment right here, as we, we reviewed, it's going to be like the seal. And like in the United States of America, we have, they have their own seal, as where we're from, Mark and I are from, and Liam, we're from the United States of America. So in, the, in this seal, what, there are three things that it identifies this seal, the seal of, the, of the, the president of the United States, right? So first, you have the president. That's the, um, that's the title, the president. And who's the president right now of the United States? It's none other than... Mr. Donald Trump, amen, of where, where's the territory of the United States, and so just as we have an earthly seal, or the United States has a seal, and I believe the Philippines have a seal, we also, we also have a seal, we have a heavenly seal that God has over us, and that is none other than the Sabbath, amen, so we see that God's seal contains this three, just like the like the United States seal, where we have the, the, the president, which is the, the title, the creator or the, the president of the United States, which is Donald Trump, and the United States is the territory. So we have the same thing in God's seal. So what it is, so we see that um, the seven-day Sabbath contains the, the Lord our God, right? It contains the title, which is our creator, 
and the territory which is heaven and earth. Amen? So we, we also see that this, this seal was actually found in the, in the, the three angels' message that, that is in Revelation chapter 14. So let us read Revelation, Revelation chapter 14. Let us read over here. It says, And I saw another angel flying in, in mid-heaven, having an eternal gospel to preach to those who live on earth and to every nation and tribe and tongue and people. Verse 7, And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens and earth and the seas and, and springs of water. Amen? So we see that even in this gospel message, even in this everlast, everlasting gospel, in the three angel message, we see that the seal is very core to this right here. To what? To worship God as the creator who, who, who's, who made heaven and earth. That is the, the territory. Amen? So we see that this seal of God is actually in the three angel message that God wants to, want us to actually share to his second coming. Amen? So this worldwide message, this, this three angels message is none other than a worldwide call to worship the creator. And one of the reasons why we shall worship the creator, because if we don't worship the creator, what will we do? We'll be worshiping what? Ourselves, we'll be worshiping idols, we'll be worshiping any kind, other, any kind of other things other than God himself. Amen? So let us move on. So... One thing I would want to share, how do we get this seal or who does the sealing? Amen? So the sealing is none other. We, we, we are sealed by what? By the Spirit until the day of redemption. Amen? And that is found in Ephesians 4.30. So let us go over it. What, it. what does it say? And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed to the day of redemption. Amen? So we see that the Holy Spirit does the healing when we receive Christ into our hearts. It's the Holy Spirit that does the healing upon our mind and upon our hearts. Amen? Amen? Amen. So let, let, let us read this, this other passage in Ezekiel 20, verse 12. It says, Moreover also, I gave them my Sabbaths to be a what? To be a sign between who? Between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord, that what? sanctifies them there is nobody that can sanctify any any creature on earth or, or especially for us but who but god or the lord himself amen so when we give ourselves to the lord it is he who sanctifies it he it is he who sanctifies us and is the it is the holy spirit that seals us amen with the with with his sign amen let us read this um this quote from ellen g white okay start from here Ready? So it says, those who are distrustful of self, who are humbling themselves before who? Before God, purifying their souls by obeying the truth. These are receiving heavenly mode, the preparing for the seal of God in their what? Their forehead when the decree goes forth and the stamp is impressed. Their character will remain pure and what? Spotless. Amen? So when basically this, this quote is saying, when we don't have trust in ourselves, when we rely on God for, to sanctify us, what does he, and, and what, what do we do? We humble ourselves before God, purifying our soul by obeying the truth. He will, they are, we are receiving the what? The heavenly mode and preparing for the seal of God in their foreheads. When the decree goes forth, the stamp is impressed. Their character will remain pure and spotless. Amen? See, right now, we don't, we don't have the seal of God. We're preparing this for, to receive the seal of God. Amen? So right now, as we give ourselves to God, as we, as, we, as we purify ourselves in His truth, He will sanctify us and He will prepare us to receive the seal upon our foreheads. Amen? So I would like to just uh, highlight, we're kind of going by quick. I would like to highlight this right here. Whenever there's for every truth that God has, there is what? There is a counterfeit. A counterfeit. Whenever there is a fact, there is what? There is a fake. So 
this is a sign that God wants to give upon us because when he gives it to us, we are, we are, um, we are being sanctified him for not only, f you know, for his holy purpose, but be we, we are being sanctified for, for our heavenly work also to receive the seal of God. Amen? So right here. So with every truth, there is a counterfeit. Amen? So it says right here, in Rev let's read in Revelation 14.9. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. So right now, we're going to reveal what is the mark of the beast. Amen? So we, we, already had, we already understand that the seal of God is actually a sign and that is found in the Sabbath and that is found in the Ten Commandments. Amen? So now we're going we're gonna to identify um, lightly what is the mark of the beast. So anybody in here, if when we hear the mark of the beast, what do we, what, what do we, um, what do we think? Or what do you think, what is the mark of the beast? Any, anybody? What do you think is the mark of the beast? Anyone? Okay, let us move forward. Okay. The mark of the beast isn't a barcode. Just because it's on the forehead, it isn't a barcode. Amen. A lot of people they may think, you know, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have barcodes on our on our foreheads, but that is not the mark of the beast. Amen. And is it is not a chip. A lot of people are having uh, implanted chips into their hands right now, but that is not the mark of the beast. Amen. So, what is the mark of the beast? Amen. So right now, we, we, we'd like to um, just highlight it real quick that this mark of the beast is, in, is it more than just a barcode or a chip. You know, the enemy, he's, he's very, very clever in, in, um, in, in, in introducing this mark, you know. But just like a dollar sign, I mean not a dollar sign, just like a dollar bill or like a hundred dollar bill, the only way you can identify if it's fake is by what? is by observing the actual bill itself. So when we, same thing when, we're, when we spend time with God. When we spend time with God, we'll identify what is actually counterfeit and what is actually truth and what is fake and what is fact, amen? So what I'm gonna reveal next, um, maybe a little bit shocking to some of us here, but you know, the Bible says that the truth shall set us free, amen? And I would like to say this is more than it's, it's, it, it, the, it's not the people who are receiving the mark of the beast, okay, as of right now. It's actually the system that's introducing this mark of the beast. And is, it is none other than Sunday worship. Why is it Sunday worship? Because we have to, we have to remember that when, su when Sunday worship was, was uh, introduced first into, into Christianity, it came from a pagan background. It came from um, the, you know, the papal Rome where they pushed Sunday worship, amen? So we have to understand that when, 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 the, when papal Rome ended up introducing this Sunday worship, it wasn't actually from the word of God. It was actually from their understanding from what they, under, what they was observing. If you look into the word, what, is, what does the word, it has two things in there. What does it say? It says Sunday. If you guys read in Ezekiel chapter 8 and chapter 9, we, especially in chapter 8, you'll see that, there were in the, that the people were in the temple and they were facing their backs towards the temple and they were facing their face to, to the door which the sun was um, shining in. So there's a little historical background there in Ezekiel chapter 8 that that um, Sunday worship actually became, came from pagan, from pagan Rome or from the pagan lifestyle, amen? But, you know, although, the, although this Sunday worship is going on in this world today, God always has his faithful people. You know, in, in the time that we're actually living in now, they will try to press Sunday worship on us. They will, they will, try, to allow, they will try to tell us to not um, worship the Sabbath. But if we'll be faithful to the end, God will always reward us, amen? I remember, I believe Mark, this is Mark's um, uh, PowerPoint from last night, 
What does it say in Revelation chapter 15, verse 2 and 4? It says, I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire, and those who have the victory over the beast, over his image, and over his mark, and over the numbers of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God. Amen? So God will give us victory we, as long as we give ourselves to him, as long as we allow him to sanctify us, as long, as long as we receive him and allow the Holy Spirit to seal us upon our foreheads and, 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 and to keep us. God will give us victory over who? Will give us victory over the beast. This time right here is none other than the time of trouble. Right before the, the seven last plague will fall upon um, the, the wicked, as we will, we will highlight later on in the future. Or if you guys have any questions, we can an actually answer that on Sunday night, uh, Sunday evening. Amen? So what does, what does God give us? God gives us victory over the beast and over his image, over his mark, over the numbers of his name, of his name, that what? That will be standing on the sea of glass, having harps of God. Amen? So no matter what, no matter what, the enemy throws at us no matter what the government may try to force upon us if they would want us to observe Sunday or, or, or go against what God actually want us to do we have we have you know we have nothing to fear right like the saying go we have nothing to fear if Jesus is near no matter what happens all the storms may be going around us God will ha has have his hand protecting us just like this tree there may be dark clouds all around us but there'll be bright sunny days if we submit ourselves and we give ourselves to God, amen? So this is another promise right here, amen? So it says in Revelation chapter 7, verse 14, And I said to him, Sir, you know, so he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, amen? So this great tribulation, as I highlighted before, as I mentioned before, this is after the, the, the seven last plagues, but it shouldn't, it, it, sh it shall not fall on us because why? Because we have what? We have God's protection. As much, all we got to do is just give ourselves to God and He'll protect us. You know, we'll feel like we'll, we'll be pressed and we'll feel like we'll be, we're going to be oppressed by, by, by Satan, but no matter what, God is going to protect us through it all. Amen? So let me, let me just, um, let me just highlight this again. So we just got to remember that this sign, this sign that God gives us is none other than, than the Sabbath, amen? As we shall read again. Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord, that what? That sanctifies them. It is God who sanctifies us. It, it is God who keeps us. And all we have to do is just to remain faithful all the way to the end. Let's read this in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. So it says, If you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. Amen? So we'll be going through a lot of tribulations. We'll, we'll be going through, I shouldn't say tribulation. We'll be going through a lot of times of, of, of trouble. But let us just remain faithful to God, and he'll give us the crown of life. And no matter what, when the seven last plagues fall on the wicked, we shall, not, we shall not be moved. God will protect us as, this, as we've seen in this picture. God will protect us and God will have his, his holy presence over us no matter what happens in life. Amen? So let us just to remain faithful even when facing death. And he will give us the crown of life. Amen? Um, so tomorrow we'll be going more in, in depth of the mark of the beast. Um, forgive me for this, this short sermon. Um, so let us just remain faithful, no matter what, to, until death. When we're facing death, I mean, and God will give us the crown of life. Amen? Amen.